First, Diane, the owner of the art gallery. She was out drinking with Nick Cormack in a bar on the night Anna died. Nick confirmed this, and so she has an alibi. But then we have what Nick's wife Olivia told us. According to Olivia, Nick and Diane not only went to the bar, but also went somewhere else that night. Do you remember where that was, Zach? Hmm. They went to the art gallery, the diner, at the clock tower. They went to the art gallery. That's right. The art gallery. Before entering the gallery, Diane looked back towards Olivia. Almost as though she saw Olivia in the dark. Nick's behavior has also become more suspicious by the day. If Olivia is correct, then he is heavily involved in this case. But we have no conclusive evidence of that at the moment. The only thing we can say for sure is that Nick's whereabouts are unknown at the time of Becky's murder. He has no alibi for the crime. But that fact alone means nothing. So who was it that called Thomas to report trouble at Becky's place? Was it Nick? Was it Carol? Was it Quint? Quint. That's right. Gotta be. It was Quint. It's a good thing I remember this stuff. His boyfriend. He went to her house and saw the tragedy. Now, about Becky's murder. I'm embarrassed and mortified. Killer struck again while we were on the case. We found her bitten off tongue. A massive amount of red seeds that poured out of the blood. And an inverted peace symbol, like the one seen at the site of Anna's murder. From the similarities, one can deduce that Anna's killer killed Becky. We also found one other important piece of evidence in Becky's room. Can you remember what that was, Zach? Well, it wasn't the stiletto heels, it was sketchbook, fragment of the raincoat. I'm gonna say it was sketchbook. That's right. We found a sketchbook in Becky's room. She had apparently written a letter to her sister Diane. It revealed that Becky took a locket from Anna's body at the crime scene. She also admitted to borrowing a pair of Diane's stiletto heel shoes. So, Miss Stiletto Heels was Becky. There was something else at the end of the letter. It said that she handed the locket and stiletto heel shoes to someone. Do you remember who, Zach? Yeah, it was the boys. It wasn't Kaysen. Look at that picture of Kaysen. No, it was Isaac and Isaiah. That's right, Zach. And from what Isaac and Isaiah told us, Carol offered to take the items to Diane, but the twins refused. They gave them to Diane themselves, as they had promised. For some reason, Carol wanted the locket. She ended up storming into the gallery to take it from Diane. And when Carol took the locket from Diane, Kaysen just happened to be there. Is Kaysen involved in this? Or was he just there by coincidence? I wonder what's so special about the locket, too. Why did Carol want it so badly? <clears throat> the questions are mounting. Might have been hers to begin with. Come to think of it, Quint, the first witness, has no alibi for Becky's death. We checked the phone records and his call definitely came from her house. Is it possible he attacked Becky and then called us from the scene? But everyone is suspicious one way or another. What should we do next, Zack? Okay, who's the most suspicious? Honestly, it's Nick. <laughs> it's not Diane. It's gotta be Nick. I mean, he's always an asshole. No, I don't think so. Damn it. He's certainly suspicious, but there is someone else at the center of this. Alright, alright. Gotta be Carol. That's right. Becky's sister and Carol's enemy, linked to both Nick and Kaysen, the elegant owner of the art gallery. 
Zach, that's our next move. We'll start with Diane. <clears throat> I'd be like a terrible FBI agent. This motherfucker doesn't have an alibi, and he's an asshole. He's suspect So, you one. want to find out everything there is to know about Diane? That's right. There's just too many things that we don't know. First, we need more intel about the relationship between Nick and Diane. How? Nick and Diane meet every night at the bar. Let's use that. George, we'll need you to stake out the gallery. What do you mean? Wait in the parking lot of the art gallery and tail Diane when she leaves. If she goes anywhere other than the bar, you let me know. Emily, you take the diner. Wait for Nick and tail him to the bar, too. As with George, if he goes anywhere else, then you let me know. Okay. Thomas, you keep a watch on them inside the bar. Yes, yes I will. I'll be waiting in the parking lot of the bar. Once Nick and Diane are together, I will follow them wherever they go. What time do they usually show up, Thomas? Around the same time. Usually between 22 and 2300. Then at that time we do it, boys and girls. So I'm going to mention at some point, between like five minutes ago and now, York decided to shave in like the sheriff's office. Number of days have passed, 13. Sweet. We got $310 plus that amount of money equals 16143. That was a weird way of saying that. Sweet. So we're stakeout. We're stakeout boys now. Fuck yeah. I didn't know that was like the end of the chapter right there. I would have done that last time. Oops. Well, not end of the chapter, but like each chapter is broken up into parts. I didn't know that we were right there. Oh, now it's back again. Holy shit, you went through pretty fast. We need to be at Carol's bar at 2200. Looks like we have some time to kill. We can go to the diner and see how Nick and Olivia are doing. Man, you grew that shit fast, man. Yeah, it's already 2030. Fallen goddess. Cool, cool. If we're on a, technically a different part, then I wonder then if we can go to the gas station. I really want to get York's car. That's That's ultimately my end goal here. I just need to remember how to get there now. Because down here is... Down here is, uh... I always like, want to keep calling this the bookstore. But it's not. It's, uh... I'm pretty sure it's a restaurant. <laughs> yes, yeah, the A&G. Zach, if you notice anything, just stop me. Well, I try to. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. Um... Where's the gas station? Oh, apparently Kaysen's right in here, too. Uh, where am I going? We have to go here. Brian's house. Oh, yeah, Brian. Brian! Brian, the, the weird, uh, the weird gravekeeper. That's not the way to go, either. Where the hell's the gas station? There's Becky's house. I don't know if it counts if I was that swear yet. Angie Jiner. Isaac and Isaiah apparently still have a uh, a quest that I can do. I forget what they need me to do. Wesley's home at his house. We could stop there. Yeah, the Heaven and Hell gas station. So we gotta go. Gotta turn around. All right, gotta do a 180. You ready for this shit? That was a, that was practice run. All right, you ready for this shit? Hang on. Hang on, I'm like stuck on something. Hang on. Alright, you ready for this? Gonna do a U-turn. I saw this on cops one time. Hiya! That was actually pretty good. Only problem is this car has like no acceleration. Suspect would have been would have been away. I wouldn't have been able to do the fucking pit maneuver. You guys remember watching shows like that? There's like cops, disorderly conduct, and there's like another show I, I can't remember the name of, but I know I watched. Every time they said pit maneuver, they were they were like so in it. 
the way they say it. It's like the motherfucking pit maneuver. And sometimes they had like a music that come like right after you say it. Shit was hilarious. I remember watching a lot of disorderly content just because it was funny. Just because, I don't know, like the aerial footage, so, there's something about it. Something about it that I really liked. I just, I just find that stuff funny. That was also around the time, like, you would watch, like, I don't know, like, what was the, what was the other one called? Dog the Bounty Hunter. I don't remember watching that a lot, but I know there's a girl in high school, or not high school, I think it was, like, middle school or something. I don't want to talk to you, I want to talk to your husband. That sounds a little weird, but that's the truth. I think it was in middle school when that, when that stuff was going down for me. There was a girl I had a crush on that really liked Dog the Bounty Hunter, so I tried watching it a couple of times. <laughs> I watched a few episodes. Just so, like, the next day at school I'd have something to talk to, talk to her about. I was one of those guys, okay? Then again, what guy, what guy doesn't do that? I mean, you try to have the, the same interests. <laughs> did the same thing with musicals, quite honestly. I'm not the biggest fan of musicals, truth be told. Even though I did theater all throughout high school. Can I do this yet? Yes, I can. Hell yeah. Here's your $400, Jackery. <laughs> Benjamin, today's a big day! I'm one lucky fella now, ain't I? Thanks to this monkey in a suit, I got Ten of oh, you hell now. yeah, I got them all. Thanks working for an honest dollar look pretty bad now, don't it? With this green, I'm going to get me a new muffler. For a thousand dollars? I better get over to the generals and look for one. Reminds me, man, that general. He was going on about some high-fly car that just came in. Said it was the car that FB idiot drove into town with. Must be a sweet sound and ride, though. Must be a sweet I sound a ride, though. Run pretty smooth. Ah, what do I care? It ain't my thing. It's like the most he's talked. Wow. Sweet, you have a thousand dollars, Jack. Zack, I think I understood what he was talking about. My car is at the General's junkyard. Let's get over there and see if we can get it repaired. I don't care what it's going to cost. That car has sentimental value. Really? That's it? <laughs> It has sentimental value. Not that, you know, like, I love the car, or, you know, it's a sweet-ass car. It's just like, I kind of like it. It's nostalgic. Like, huh? <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, where I was in theater for the longest time, I'm not honestly the biggest fan of musicals. I remember, of course, being a kid, like, during the high school musical craze, I got into that stuff. Mainly because, I don't know, like, Disney back then was like the shit to me. It's still the shit to me, but not quite the same again. You so know? We can take a rest if you're tired. You know what I mean? Do you, do you get what I'm dropping? You know? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of kids were like, like that, though. But... In, uh, in high school, when I was in theater, I was subjected to a lot more musicals, but I will be honest with you, the music... The, like I said, I'm not a big fan of musicals, but there's a couple that I do like. Zach, One of them is, is there rent. something here that you want to check out? We need to be I at really Carol's like Bar 2200. We're free until then. Along with uh, Repo Man. Can we actually go talk? Oh my god, he's here. Fuck yeah. We can get the car. <laughs> Came at a good time, son. Indeed I did. I want the car. General, there's something I want to ask you. What is it? Before you ask, though, I can't customize your car anymore. No, it's not about that. I heard you've got my other car here. The one I drove to Greenvale. Your car? So that high-spec beauty was yours? Yes. I was wondering, you know, if you could fix it up for me. I won't mind if it costs me a bunch to get it repaired. Quite important to you, is it, this car? <laughs> Very well, then. If you're willing to pay, I'll do the work for you. Why haven't you done it yet? You knew it was the FBI guy's car. You're just gonna let it sit here? I would never, like, get back to it? <laughs> Well, yeah. What do you want? I want the car. Rank makes the man. That's true. But then the man also makes the rank. Status isn't as important as self-confidence. I want. I want my car. 
$5,000. You know, that's actually not too shabby. Let's fix this car. It's a little bit expensive, but considering the distance I had, I have to drive, it's not too bad. Hell yeah, let's get our car back. I don't think we can okay, do it so early. thank you very much. It's going to take a while to carry out the repairs, though. Go and get a good night's sleep and come back soon, why don't you? Once it's done, I'll put it out front. Sweet. Just use this key and take it. Key to York's car. Thanks. Don't worry. I may not look it, but I'm pretty darn good at what I do. I mean, I, I thought you did, yeah. See, the only other thing now we need... I need to go pay a visit to Wesley since I've got the radio, too. I need to... She probably should have used that to get over here, to be honest. <laughs> but it was, like, right there. And I was in the middle of talking. Where's Wesley's? Panda Bear. I want to see if he has a shotgun. I want a shotgun. I've been, like, waiting for one for the longest time. And then we'll go to the Oh Dear Diner. I'm pretty sure the new weapons just show up in the box, but, I mean, he's right here. Hmm. I'd like to buy. Damn it, there's nothing new. You don't even sell cigarettes, man. Alright, later, Wesley. <clears throat> we'll go to the Oh Dear. Get a good night's sleep, and then we'll come back for our car. Truth be told, I normally don't get it this early, but I... I guess where I've been recording the game, I've been, like, hell-bent on getting several side missions started and going. That I... <laughs> I just kept visiting Jack's place. I just kept visiting it, and I managed to actually get it all up. Why do I keep calling it the Oh Dear Diner? Or the Oh Dear Place? I don't know. It's the Grand Deer Hotel. I guess I'm weird. Thanks, George. Because remember, he's the one that's doing the fast traveling for us. <laughs> he's supposed to be staking out the place, but he's like, oh shit, York's got to go to bed. <laughs> Even though I'm the one supposed to be there. It's not exactly the best, the biggest requirement. I know in the original game it was, it was really good to get the car as soon as possible. Do 12 hours? Yeah, we'll do 12 hours. Hmm. Really good night's sleep. Yeah, I know I should get some food. Shut up. It's very dirty. Go ahead and put on... I don't I really like this suit. It's nice. Go ahead and send that off. Usually the ones I switch between are this one, this one, and this one. Trendy clothes, it says. Nice. Now I should just be able to go right back to the general's place, and we should be good. Actually, how long? What time is it? It's like 8 o'clock. Polly? Polly's not up yet. Damn it, Polly. Can I smoke indoors? <laughs> Fine, clear day. Yeah, we'll see about that. He just said a full day. I think one of the when it transitions over to a new day, I think you're fine. You don't actually have to wait 24 hours. At least I hope not. I mean, once these side quests are, like, honestly finished, like, now we just have to worry about Emily's. And then I'm good. <laughs> we can just continue on through the main mission. George, you need to take me to the junkyard again. <laughs> Because that's one of the things you get for Emily's thing. You get a weather doll. Doll that expresses rain by turning around. Because you can switch the weather. Really helps out for some quests. You said it was just right here? Oh, hell yeah, there it is. Look at it. Look at this bad boy. Add new parts to the car to improve its performance. I don't think you can. Look at this thing. Low poly beauty. It feels so great to be back in my own car, Zach. Remember when I bought this beauty? We took it for a spin together. But in the end, all we did was circle a few blocks and return home. 
Hardly worth starting the engine for, really. The general did a good job, though, didn't he? Indeed. Sweetness. <laughs>